All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his ever glorious book, say, how can those who know be equal to those who don't know? Only those who have understanding will take heed. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, <clears throat> and that Muhammad is his valerie and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household, companions, and upon those who follow their path till the day of judgment. Islam has called people to seek knowledge and praised diligence in acquiring it. This is so clear from the fact that the first ver verse revealed from the glorious Quran is Allah saying, read. Read in the name of your Lord who created. He created man from a clinging form. Read, your Lord is the most bountiful one, who taught by means of pen, who taught man what he didn't know. Accordingly, the first divine command was to read, which is the first means of knowledge. Then the verse referred to the pen, which is the tool for, for recording and transmitting knowledge. This shows for all people the virtue of knowledge and is an encouragement to, in, to inquire it. It is thus evident that Islam is the religion of science and knowledge and that this nation of Islam is the nation of science and civilization. The Almighty Allah did not command his prophet peace be upon him to ask for an increase of any of the world affairs except with regard to knowledge. The Almighty Allah says, say, Lord, increase me in knowledge. Moreover, the Prophet, peace be upon him, equated the pursuit of knowledge with striving for the cause of Allah, and that such action leads to paradise. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, he who goes forth in search of knowledge is considered as struggling in the cause of Allah until he returns. The glorious Quran praises scholars regardless of their specializations. As the Almighty Allah said, Allah will raise up by many degrees those of you who believe and those who have been given knowledge. He is fully aware of what you do. He the exalted is also, also stated that scholars are the ones who fear him most, saying, it is those of his servants who have knowledge who stand in true awe of Allah. Allah is almighty, most forgiving. Giving this status, scholars are declared by Allah as the witnesses to his oneness. As the Quran says, Allah bears witness that there is no God but him. As do the angels and those who have knowledge. He upholds justice. There is no God but him, the almighty the all-wise. The Prophet, peace be upon him, emphasized this, showing that people of knowledge are the heirs of prophets, in terms of guiding people and calling them to the path of Allah and to the path of truth and reformation. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, the learned are the heirs of the prophets, who bequeath neither dinar nor dirham, but only that of knowledge, and he who acquires it has, in fact, acquired an abundant portion. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also said, the superiority of the learned man over the devout worshiper is like that of the full moon to the rest of the stars, that's in brightness. It goes without saying that the scholars whom the Almighty Allah honored and whom the Messenger of Allah praised are the true scholars who realize the greatness of the responsibility that they shoulder. It is the responsibility of knowledge, calling to Allah and explaining his commands. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, May Allah cause to flourish a slave of his who hears my word and understand them. Then he conveys them from me. The faithful scholars have understood the mission for which Allah has chosen, has chosen them. It is not a mission to earn money with. It is a more sublime and lofty mission. The Almighty Allah commanded his prophet to say, say, if I have asked you for any reward, you can keep it. It is Allah alone who will reward me. He is witness to everything. Also, the Quran reported the statements of prophets Noah, Hud, Saleh, Lut, and Shu'aib, peace be upon them, saying, 
I ask no reward of you, for my only reward is with the Lord of the Worlds. All prophets speak in the same affirmative tune, confirming the unity of their goal, approach, faithful, faithful intent, and devotion to Allah. The true scholars of the, nations, of the nation are those who spent their time and effort for the sake of Allah and used their knowledge in the service of their religion and their homeland. Thus, they lead people through the path of moderation, tolerance, and mercy. Therefore, their coal yielded good generations who build and never destroy, raise human dignity, and coexist with all people in peace, security, and safety. This is actually the beneficial knowledge that benefits man after death. In this regard, the Prophet peace be upon him said, when a man dies, all his good deeds come to an end, except three, ongoing charity, beneficial knowledge, and a righteous son who prays for him. The Prophet peace be upon him used also to seek refuge with Allah from knowledge that neither benefits nor builds nor cultivates manners and ethics. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Ask Allah for beneficial knowledge and seek refuge with Allah from knowledge that's of no benefit. The Prophet, peace be upon him, furthermore used to supplicate Allah, saying, O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from knowledge that's of no benefit, a heart that's not humble, a supplication that's not heard, and a soul that's not satisfied. With that said, I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that our Master, Prophet Muhammad, is his valerie and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his family, companions, and, ho and whoever follows their guidance to the Day of Judgment. Muslim brothers, sincere scholars of this Ummah are the ones who guide us to the righteous path. They are people of righteousness and moderation. They are the ones who carry the flag of moderation in every time and protect the religion of Allah from corruption of the extremists and the interpretation of the, igno of the ignorant. As for those same scholars who exploit religion to reach their goals and purposes, they have indeed violated the limits and allowed themselves to issue fatwas that harm people, not benefit them, that divide not gather, that destruct, not builds, and that opens the door to takfir in this ummah, a matter that Islam has warned us against. Those scholars who stir up and rest are exactly like those who talk on no basis of knowledge and who do not understand the need of the ummah to make use of moderation and ease. They do not realize that construction of the world is one of the objectives of the Sharia and that people will not respect our religion unless we achieve superiority in our worldly affairs. Those who do not understand this fact direct their speeches and preaching to prohibit people from the worldly life, a matter that caused so many laymen to misunderstand the relation between religion and the worldly life. To the extent that they, have, uh, they understand that mysticism is none but isolation from life, neglecting the saying of Allah, Our Lord, give, give us in this world that which is good, and in the hereafter that which is good, and protect us from the punishment of the fire. In this vein, issuance of fatwa by those qualified persons is unqualified persons is misguidance and a way to lead people astray. Fatwa based on no knowledge has caused considerable harm to people. Jabir ibn Abdullah, may, be, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated, we set out on a journey. One of our companions was hurt by a stone that injured his head. He then had a wet dream. He asked his fellow travelers, do you find a concession for me to perform tayammum? They said, we do not find any concession for you while you can use water. He took a bath and died. When 
we came to the Prophet, the incident was reported to him. He said, they killed him. May Allah kill them. Could they not ask when they don't know? The cure for ignorance is inquiry. It was enough for him to perform tayammum and to pour some drops of water or bind a bandage over the wound and wipe over it and wash the rest of his body. We are actually in a dire need to stick to our specializations and to exert our utmost in what we can do in fulfillment of showing fear to Allah, respecting knowledge and consideration of the danger of words. For words served many times as the causes for destruction and corruption. So, <clears throat> silence is better than speech that causes harm and does not bring benefits. As such, if those who do not know keep silent, there will be no disagreement at all. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, He who believes in Allah in the last day, let, let him be hospitable to his guest. And he who believes in Allah and the last day, let him maintain good the ties of blood relationships. And he who believes Allah and, and the last day must speak good or remain silent. O oh Allah, show us the way to righteousness and help us adhere to it. Show us the way of misguidance and keep us away from it. Teach us what benefits us. Increase our knowledge and protect Egypt and all world countries.